we came to, to this approach uh, after having some thoughts on uh, what exactly can we do to take best advantage of uh, this nice device. I mean, it uh, packs in some serious hardware and sensors and uh, it surely offers a lot of uh, possibilities for interesting projects. But uh, our goal was to uh, keep in mind that uh, we are actually using a phone. So uh, we wanted an application that uh, uh, can still uh, let us use the Tango as a phone. So um, a camera is uh, usually something useful as we like to, to take lots of memories and uh, record the surroundings. But to push things uh, forward, uh, thanks to the Tango's uh, nice uh, depth sensor, we actually tried to record a 3D image uh, of the environment. Uh, this was uh, somehow easy as the Tango's SDK already provides access to the, to the buffer with the depth information but we also tried to render everything in OpenGL and uh, as we went with uh, the Java SDK we had to do everything from scratch in uh, OpenGL. Uh, there were lots of challenges even if the application should, uh, should do something uh, something relatively easy. Uh, there were problems decoding the data, there were problems uh, rendering it in uh, OpenGL. But uh, I could say, uh, given this was a hackathon, uh, everything was quite challenging. I mean, getting uh, pieces of information out of the device and uh, making that work was surely rewarding. Just to give you some insight on uh, on uh, what we had to deal with, uh, using the depth uh, sensor, uh, we were able to extract the information in, uh, in grayscale uh, levels. So uh, the color actually is uh, a way to encode the distance to a given object. We were able to, we were able to uh, push this forward and uh, to make this uh, more usable for uh, taking photographs of subjects, uh, we had uh, we had to solve a simple question: Where is our subject in uh, in the picture? Uh, for that, uh, an easy solution was uh, doing a face detection, and after having the face detection, uh, we were able to know the exact distance from the device to that particular area on the screen. Uh, if you can see this image, I will be able to show it in real time and I think it will be better visible. But uh, this is just an example where we know uh, where the face is located and uh, transposing this area over the depth uh, buffer, we can actually calculate a nice average to the real distance to our subject. Uh, this is needed in order to do our uh, 3D modeling better and uh, getting to some better results. And talking about good results, here you can see a 3D model computed out of a photograph that we took. Uh, you see there are some spikes at the head area, also at the lower end. Uh, this is actually noise. But I'm happy to say that uh, even with all this noise, we were able to see uh, some uh, small details like uh, the, the face details of the subject. So let's just see a demo. Uh, I have a question because you, you, you do face detection on RGB on, on, on the picture or on the... Depth? Yes, we are using the big RGB image and uh, because of some uh, issues with experience, uh, we are only using the grayscale component, but it's quite, it's quite enough. Yeah. Okay, I need a subject. Will you guys join in or should I take a volunteer? <laughs> So, uh, okay, okay, it, it's fine. Okay, uh, we are using uh, an overlay over the camera preview. So what we are doing here, uh, we are uh, implementing a gradient uh, going from yellow to, to red. And also the transparency of uh, these layers is calculated uh, on a uh, place of the distance. So uh, the red at, uh, at on the on the wall is uh, the higher the highest distance in our image. You can see the subject's face um, detected and uh, illustrated with the green rectangle. And as explained before, we can uh, use the location 
transpose over the depth uh, matrix and uh, calculate the distance to that particular area. So this is uh, quite a useful feature that can be used to, to multiple uh, applications, not only in imaging and camera. Let's try to increase the distance. Okay, so uh, from, from a point, the face will be too small to be accepted uh, by our threshold. So let's try to lower the distance. Okay, maybe you can come closer so we get a smaller distance just to illustrate how this changes. Okay, so we are close to one meter. Okay, let's try to increase that even further. Okay, so we are like 600 centimeters. Sorry for the display, it, it uh, keeps on showing it in uh, meters. It is actually millimeters, but uh, when working on a project in a quick time frame, details as such are irrelevant. Okay, so after having uh, the, the information uh, regarding the distance, we can try to, to take a photograph and please wish me luck on this. Okay, uh,
So, uh, as we've seen in uh, in the demo and also in the pictures uh, in the presentation, uh, the noise is a problem, but uh, this can be somehow compensated as we know where the subject is <coughs> using the face detection. We can somehow uh, eliminate uh, numbers that are outside our uh, working interval. So if we know that the subject is uh, somehow at uh, three or four meters, uh, everything that uh, spikes over that, uh, that interval can be easily uh, reduced to, to ground level. This is it. Thanks for your attention. And in case there are any questions, we'd be happy to answer. Snapshot and that's it. So this can be done in seconds, even faster. And if you have enough time, you can make a 3D movie of this. Yeah, it, this will be actually very, very easy just to, to use the preview. Uh, by the way, we are using the preview callback, so uh, we are working uh, on the fly. We don't need to, to do it in the traditional way, like when you do a camera application, you know that you have that uh, shutter callback where you get everything when the picture is taken. We, we just take it out of the preview callback, so for, for a video application and recording everything on the fly, this is easy. What functionality have you used to do the face recognition? For the face recognition, yeah. We've, we've used the OpenCV with some carcass case. The biologons? Biologons, yeah. That's the algorithm behind. And, and uh, why was it? I thought it was quite unreliable given the fact that you already had region of interest, like the obstacle yep. and, you know, the, the bigger chance that you were in the, yep. in the right area to search for, uh, whereas you had uh, false positives on the wall and, you know, all around the, the person. So, do you know why that was happening or why you were you know, using the, the depth to actually focus on the right? The false positives are caused by the OpenCV and uh, this can be solved in a variety of, uh, of means. Uh, for instance, uh, for this particular application, you've seen that I asked my colleague to move further, and in that case, uh, the detection failed completely because uh, his face, physically, uh, as recorded by the phone, was too small to be taken into account. So there are some thresholds that can be set, like uh, what's the size of interest for a face you want to detect? So uh, we've tried to uh, give a wide interval in order to, to make this demo easy, but uh, normally you can uh, configure this to work for portraits, uh, photography, or uh, even so, you can even uh, do some image processing and this would help uh, better, like uh, we have uh, lots of spots with more intense light, we have shadows, uh, uh, all these uh, changes in environmental lighting uh, will affect the detection, not only for OpenCV, but most of the algorithms used so far. So what we can do there is uh, somehow measure the environment and the lighting conditions and do some balancing before feeding that uh, particular content to the face detector, be it OpenCV or any other system. Uh, 
Thank you. 